What's happening, legends? It is Tuesday, the 3rd of September. It is 6.28 in the morning. I've just finished my morning routine. I was up at 5 this morning. I've just finished reading for half an hour. Peak, the secrets from the new science of expertise. Just reading all about how the brain and body change and adapt to training. The body changes when we push our comfort zone if we sort of sit at our um, a comfort zone in our comfort zone then the body doesn't adapt but if we push our body then the our DNA reduce, releases more cells and that's when we get increases in our strength our endurance our power anything like that by pushing out of our comfort zone I think it's all just trusting yourself. Prepare, practice, and then trust yourself. But don't try and reinvent the wheel and, and back your instinct. Hey legends, just did a 7K run. Um, not as fast as I'd hoped and I'd set out to do 8K, but just got to listen to the body sometimes. The legs are quite sore. I did it. Uh, did the same run last week in four minute twelve per kilometre, and then today I did it in four twenty one. So quite slow, quite a bit slower, about a minute slower overall. And I didn't run the last car I was going to, be, but legs are sore, legs are heavy, and just got to listen to the body. Uh, I don't want to do myself an injury. Um, listening to two great podcasts. The first one on coaching by Steve Kerr and Pete Carroll, two very famous, well-known, successful coaches in the US, one an NBA coach, one an NFL coach, uh, and then they started listening to a business podcast about how to scale businesses. Um, obviously, it's cricket mentoring, so young business. I'm always trying to learn and evolve my business skills and what we're doing, so trying to uh, better myself in that and upskill myself in that. So, yeah, now just gonna get home 10 to six put the little uh, beautiful scallop to bed, cook some dinner, and then get on with some work this evening. I've uh, got some podcast stuff to do and a few other bits and pieces. So yeah, it's getting dark earlier now here. It's 10 to six, it's nearly dark. We're getting into winter. I should be in India right now, but trying to make the most of this weather here in Australia before it gets too much into winter. Hey vlog, just doing some cooking. As I've said in previous vlogs, I absolutely love cooking. I've got some a lamb roast going on here with some vegetables, which has been in the slow cooker all afternoon, all day. Looking forward to having some of that tomorrow. And then cooking a risotto here, which who knows how it's gonna turn out, but trying to expand my skills. This is a recipe from the body coach, Joe Wicks off his Instagram page. Um, so yeah, looking forward to it. We'll show you how it ends up. Just taking it off the heat, hopefully. Looks pretty good. We'll find out shortly how it tastes. Well, legends, here's the final thing. It looks pretty good. I've had a quick taste and it tastes amazing. Butternut squash risotto. Um, happy to share the recipe if anyone wants it. Little glass of red wine to go with it. I am a happy man. I'm loving spending more time in the kitchen. And one thing that this virus has given me is more time at home with my family. So instead of being out coaching in the evenings, or I should be in India right now, as I've said, um, I'm at home. So I'm trying to challenge myself and learn new things in the kitchen. This is an awesome new recipe. Um, and I de no doubt we'll be making this more and more. Butternut squash risotto. I can't wait to eat this, you little beauty. <laughs> vlog just finished a uh, great reflection it's five to ten here um of, with the guys who are from australia who are doing the um changing your game project uh, online learning course coach development course bucky reedy um darren holder matthew boyd and another guy from swimming australia we're on the call this morning really discussing being athlete centered as coaches and that's something that i think i've done quite well throughout my coaching career is really focus on the athletes and think about how we can help them, how, how what they need from us. It's not about us as coaches, it's about the athlete. It's about what they want to get out of the session. And we always try and ask our athletes at the start of every session, what do you want to get out of today? What do you want to work on? What do you think needs to improve in your game? And give the athlete ownership. Um, that's what yesterday's online learning was about. So um, yeah, really, really enjoyed that. Um, great to hear some stories from swimming and some stories from footy and how they go about things as well. And as I said in last week's vlog, uh, when I sort of spoke after the reflection, it's really good just to hear other people, what other people are learning from the course and reflect on it. So really enjoy being in that group 
and uh, be interacting with different coaches and trying to better ourselves and develop our coaching as well. Morning legends, it's a couple of minutes before 6 a.m. on Friday morning. I've got to keep my voice down, Mrs. S is still asleep. I'm just about to jump on a video call with a YouTube channel growth specialist. Someone from a company called BBTV who's helping us sort of coach us how to improve our YouTube content and grow our audience and our community. So hopefully learn a thing or two from this. Looking forward to it. Legends, I'm down here at the Nets and it's so nice to get back outdoors and do a session. I've just done a session with Doki. There he is, the young man. So that was nice to get outdoors and, and hit some, throw some balls, see him hit some balls and have some normality back into our life. Hey Legends, just finished the 15K run. It is 9.30, um, took me an hour and nine minutes. Average pace 4.37. Uh, really happy with that. Ran out first 12 Ks, we did at 4.45s, and then the last three I went hard. Came home pretty strong, I'll share my run now. Got the city in the background, absolutely stunning views down here. It's a magnificent morning for running. Still, no wind, nice and cool. The last couple of mornings we've run, well, on Saturday morning it's been hot and windy, but this morning was beautiful. Good to tick the Ks over. Tr running with one of my best mates and he's pushing me, so if you need to find someone, get a training partner, someone to keep you accountable, someone to push you, it's really good. Hey vlog, it's Saturday Arvo. I'm just sitting in my wardrobe uh, doing a podcast chat, conversation, interview with the boys from We Cricket, an awesome uh, cricket channel on YouTube, um, someone we follow and admire. The boys have built a really, really sort of engaged community of 190,000 subscribers um, on YouTube. So just having a chat to them for their podcast. And I'm sitting in here because uh, little Scarlet's outside and running around having a good time. So I just want to do it where it's nice and quiet and away from everyone. Hey vlog, just about to do an online coaching session with some cricketers in India, the KOC students. As you can see here, there's 71 participants, cricketers from the Connecticut Institute of Cricket in Bangalore. Really, really excited that technology allows us to connect and I can offer some value to these young cricketers. Yes, hello Irfan, hello Ashwini and hello KOC. Uh, thank you very much for having me as part of this panel. I'm thrilled that um, I'm able to hit, be here and 
right now, myself and our cricket mentoring students and, and athletes from around the world should be in, in Bangalore at KOC. So I'm, I'm devastated that we're unable to be there. It is, it is a real highlight of our year. Um, however, well done to Irfan, well done to Ashwini, well done to everyone at KOC for ever evolving. Um, KOC, I've been there, this would have been my third year and every year I come back, it, there's something has gotten better and the place has evolved. So well done to Irfan and everyone for, for going online in such a short period of time. The world is a crazy place right now, but I suppose I have, um, I've been online ever since I started my business. So I'm a little bit different. But well done to all of you. Right now there's 78 people online, so well done for you guys for seeing the value in this. Now, nothing beats in-person coaching, nothing, and, and being in person. However, technology connects the world and is very close to in-person coaching. The standard of technology these days and what you're able to achieve out of sessions via video means it's just like being in person. It's the very next best thing. and. Something I want you guys you guys watching and listening to think about is many, many famous cricketers and very, very successful cricketers have said that cricket is 90% mental and 10% physical. Yet we generally, and especially in India, you guys spend so much time on the technical and the physical and, and sort of don't think or practice or work on the mind and the mental skills. So from my point of view, this is an amazing opportunity for all young cricketers to go away and work on their mental skills and develop themselves. Um, not just your technique. A lot of you guys will be getting itchy and, and desperate to get back in the nets as everybody is. And that's, of course, we love the game. We love the feeling of batting and bowling and fielding, running, etc. But this is a great opportunity to step away and to work on yourself and your mental skills. Um, the best athletes are always looking to get better. They're always looking to get better. They're never sitting still. They're never happy with where they're at. And this has got to be the same. And now the fact that there's 78 people online right now tells me that there's KOC students out there who want to learn, who want to improve themselves, who want to be better. And that is exactly what you need to be the best you can be. And then hopefully that'll be, get you to being the best in your area, in your club, in your state, in your country one day. So think about what do you think Virat would be doing right now? I guarantee you Virat would be finding a way to improve himself, finding a way to be better. He'd be learning. He'd be constantly learning. And now learning can happen in many different forms. It can be reading. It can be watching videos. It can be listening to podcasts. And what Irfan Sir and the KOC guys have set up there is an amazing tool that all KOC students should be using and utilizing. Yes, you're not in person, you're not there in the KOC sort of hall, but you can still learn the same information and you don't have the access to the nets, but you can still get in front of a mirror and practice, or you can still get in, hit a ball on a string and practice, or practice your grip, or bowl a ball from one hand to the other. So you're really not missing out on as much as you think you are because of technology and because of what KOC are offering. And I'm really lucky, I, I'm really glad I've got my online sort of portal and I've got my online platform. And as Irfan said, it's something I've been doing for a long time. Um, I've been doing video analysis, um, I've been doing, we're coaching players via our online programs and we're doing some one-on-one -on -one coaching calls. And I have said all along that the power of um, online and technology allows us to, it's almost like we're in person. And so guys, if you're watching this, I really, really, really encourage you to sort of change your thinking and, and let go of the boundaries that you, just because you're not in person doesn't mean you can't be learning. Last week I mentored and coached cricketers from Australia, the UK, India, New Zealand, the USA, South Africa and other parts of the world. Technology connects us and we're so lucky, you guys are so lucky to have this wonderful program set up by Irfan and Ashwini and the, the KOC staff and I'll just leave you with one thing. You either, I heard a great quote recently, and I've heard it before, but it came back to me recently. It says, you either have results or you have excuses. So it's up to each individual what you want. You either make excuses and say, I'm not in the nets. It's a shame. I can't get better. Or you find a way. You find a way to improve yourself. You find a way in this current situation, this current environment to get better. Okay? Because if I guarantee you a lot of your, your competitors, a lot of your peers, they'll be sitting around wishing they could be in the nets and not doing anything about it. So this is your opportunity to, to make a difference and, and really get ahead of the pack, get ahead of your competitors, get ahead of your peers by investing in yourself, 
investing in your learning and trying to be the best you can be. So again, well done for all of you for being here and well done to Werfan and thank you for having me on this uh, live call. And, and, you know, moving into, I think we're going to look at this now and sort of moving into Perth, um, which I, as I said, I think coming from, from Alice Springs was, it's a huge move. Um, and then while you're in, you're at Perth, are you there professionally? You, have, have you been invited there to be just basically do sport or what was it just a move that your, you and your folks thought would be probably the best for your career? No, it was all off my own back. So um, my mum had sort of some conversations with some influential people, my coach um, up in Darwin from the NTIS, the Northern Church Institute of Sport, and a few other people I'd had offers up, sort of playing, living in Alice Springs, playing cricket for the Northern Territory and traveling around um, to different carnivals that were on sort of throughout my teenage years. I'd met various people and they said, oh, when you finish school, come and play in Canberra, come and play at my club in Sydney, come and play in Adelaide. A lot of guys from the NT had gone down to play in Adelaide, but it was it was a conversation my mum had with the the coach at the time from Darwin. He said, I think Tom should go to Perth. I think it would be good to get away from all the other guys in Adelaide. They haven't flourished and they'd been caught up living together and having too much of a good time and not letting their sort of craft and their skill sort of stay as their main focus. Um, So he suggested I go to WA and my mum had two brothers living over here. So there was some sort of family connections and the transition would have, would, would have been easier. So we then, the, the way it looked when I was in year 12 and we'd made the decision sort of earlier that year, like that I was going to shift over to the West. Um, I, I didn't know anything about WA and everyone I spoke to, everyone I spoke to said, Perth's beautiful, Perth's an amazing city. It's, and that really sort of gave me great confidence that I'll enjoy it because I'd never really been, I'd, I maybe been when I was younger, but had no sort of idea what Perth was like. And in the September school holidays, the term three and four school holidays before sort of went going into final year 12 exams, my, my mum, my twin brother and I came over to Perth for four or five days to basically check it out. And, and um, we looked at where my brother, um, where my uncles were living. They live right near each other here in Perth. And we basically got on the WACA website. Um, for those that don't know, the West Australian Cricket Association, we looked at all the district clubs. We put on Google Maps and we saw what the closest district club was where to, to where my uncles lived. And it was Melville Cricket Club. It was around the corner. And so we got on their website and they'd won the premiership the previous two years. That was the first thing we saw, two premiership flags. Like, And my mum said, right, this is the club you're going to. You can go to, a, you sh- I want you to go to a strong club where you earn your position, not try and go to a weak club and just walk in. And I'd, I'd sort of been a big fish in a small pond in the Northern Territory. And then obviously I was going to come into Western Australia and be a small fish in a bigger pond. So that was something that um, we, my mum and I then contacted the, the head coach and we arranged a meeting with him um, for when we came over in September that year. So we went to his office one day, um, uh, drove out there. He sort of took a break from his work and, and sat down with his clipboard and, and sort of said, Yep, yep, nice to meet you, blah, blah. Obviously, yep, we'd love to have you at the club. Young sort of representative player from the Northern Territory. This is the sort of squad we've got. We've got a very strong squad. And I sort of said, oh, look, my best mate from Darwin's going to move down with me. And he's a spin bowler and he's a leggy. And they said, and the coach said, yep, we don't don't have many spinners. We're, We're very much relying on our seamers. So there's an opportunity there. So we got to meet him then and we got a good vibe. And and so then I came down um, in January. So I went away in December and played at the state 19s, the national 19s, and then played at the national 17s and then came to Perth straight after that. And although I thought I was going to sort of start in the high, high sort of grades, I started straight fourth grade, first game, um, earn your stripes. Thanks. New player, fourth grade. Um, and yeah, I, I was having to support myself. Um, fortunately I did well in the first game of fours and moved up to the twos after that. And I ended up debuting having my first grade debut at the end of that season in the one day final which was probably the most remarkable game I've ever played in it was at the Wacker day night game and our number 11 hit the last ball of the match for four to win the game um and it was it was yeah the still the most amazing sort of game I've been involved in um Did you get and runs? it finished at 10 o'clock at night yeah I got 26 which was the second top score for us that Top score was 60, and then the next top score was 26. Um, so I contributed. Um, Got to start. And it was just a surreal feeling. Uh, 
it's a real feeling to win the win the flag off the last ball at the Wacker. So, yeah, it certainly wasn't professional. It wasn't as smooth like here you go. Here's your first grade debut because you played a bit of state cricket for the NT. Like it was, I had to earn my stripes and had to completely support myself. Um, hopefully you're all going all right during this this challenging period. Um, I'm trying to continue to give um, value and advice and all sorts throughout this time. And hopefully everyone's finding a way to continue to learn and develop because it's, it is such a challenging time that life has changed um, as we know it. So yeah, hopefully everyone's still able to get out and do something, whether it's exercise or some skills at home or mental skills, guys, something that I think is really undervalued in cricket, something that I think we can all be spending this time doing is um, really working on ourselves as a person, working on our mental skills, um, for, not only for cricket, but also for, for the um, other aspects of our life as well. So, um, Jordan, good to see you there, mate. Thanks for joining. About me just trying to give you guys, give back to you guys as customers who you guys have bought something from Cricket Mentoring. So I'm really appreciative of that and want to just keep adding value to you and, and answering any questions you might have. So it's not really any sort of topic or anything, but here we go. We've got a question. Nice one, Amo. Uh, okay, so um, Albert has asked, what are some drills that I can do? All right, good question. So the first thing is we've, we've got a video on YouTube where we cover a lot of drills, um, but I think it's about being creative. You've got to be creative. Everyone's got different spaces. Everyone's got different resources. Some people have siblings or parents that can help, others don't. So you've got to find a way. You've got to think outside the box. You've got to get on YouTube. You've got to get on Google and and look at what others are doing and then adapt it to whatever resources, whatever conditions you've got. You might have a lot of wall space and you can throw the ball against the wall. You can hit a ball against the wall. You might have no wall space. Um, you might have a brother or sister or a mum or dad to practice with and them to throw you balls. You might have a little Pac-Man that you can use in the backyard. So I think it's really important that you just try and adapt and challenge yourself. Like don't just throw a tennis ball against the wall and smack it and make it easy. Get a golf ball and a stump or get right up close to the wall and challenge your reactions. It's not about sort of this is it. Who knows how long this is going to go for? This is a strange sort of time we're going through right now. We don't know when the end date is, but if we are going to get through it, we are going to come out the other side. And, and I think you can, you can break your time up to um, challenging yourself in certain things. And then also working on your fundamentals, working on your sort of your techniques and whatever, and whether that's bowling and just working on stationary um, positions. I saw a, I saw a really good thing, and, and some of you might follow the Pace Journal account on Instagram. Um, a friend of ours here at Cricket Mentoring is a really, really good and knowledgeable fast bowling coach. Um, and he talks about that um, fast bowling is all, it's all stationary positions that you have to get used to. So if you're a fast bowler, you can practice all that technical stuff at home on your own. And from a batting point of view, you can go through your basics. You can do your stuff in front of the mirror. You can do your stuff with a ball on a string. But you can also find a way to challenge yourself, whether that's putting some soap on a, on a uh, bit of wood and like someone throwing the ball really fast and you're, you're trying to just keep it out. So you can't, I don't think you can say do this and do that. You've got to sort of think about your environment. And everyone's got to sort of adapt to whatever they've got, whatever conditions they've got. So Albert, I hope that helps. Amok says, how do you work on your mental skills? Great question. I put something on Instagram last night. Um, and this is not an exclusive list. There's many more things you can be doing, but things like studying what the best players do, studying what they say, talk something that was a real eye opener for me was really just paying attention to the best players, what they talk about. Um, and they often talk about getting in the zone and, and relaxing and all these things. And, and there was nothing really about all oh, my cover drive and my forward defense and my top elbow. Um, and that was a real eye opener for me that it's all about us, us as humans Firstly, understanding ourselves and then managing ourselves. That's, that's the ultimate sort of what we want to get to. We want to understand how we think. We want to understand what gets us excited, what gets us scared. When we play our best, what are we doing? What does it look like? So th the more you can understand yourself, you can then manage yourself, then you can play at your best. Because we all can play at our best in the nets when there's no pressure, no consequences. But the real challenge and the real skill is turning that sort of skill from the nets into performance in a game. And not everyone can do it. A lot of people get overawed. They get, and it starts, I believe it starts with our thoughts. So we think, don't stuff up, don't make a mistake, don't let someone down. And that makes us feel panicked and tense and anxious and we get tight and then we can't play with the freedom. We can't make good decisions 
and we, we really struggle to then move and play with freedom like we do in the net. So that's a thought process. So understanding how to, okay, it's okay to have negative thoughts. It's okay as humans from evolution, we're hardwired to have negative thoughts. That's how we survived over, over these many, many thousands, hundreds of thousands of years. So then we need to have skills and techniques to sort of shift our attention from the negative to a positive thought, something that's going to make us feel good, something that's going to make us feel calm and relaxed so that we can play at our best. So things like, yeah, studying the best players, learning to meditate. Meditation is an amazing, amazing tool that can calm our mind, calm our body, and it can really allow us to practice focusing our attention on the present moment. And I can't go into too much detail on all of these things, but here's a few other Mindfulness, again, just whatever you're doing, you're trying to keep your attention in the moment, being really mindful of what you're doing. Um, reflecting. Reflecting is an awesome thing we can all be doing during this period where we're at home is think about things you've done well in the past 12 months to two years or five years. What have you done well? Where have you come from? How have you improved? Where have you scored your runs? Where have you... And then on the other side, think about the things you haven't done well. What, what do you struggle with? What do you struggle against? Often when we're 100 miles an hour and we're in the nets all the time, we're at school, we're at work, whatever we're doing, we don't have a chance to sit down and reflect and actually build awareness about us as a person, but also as a cricketer. So this is a great chance to really build awareness and understanding of who we are as people and who we are as cricketers so that you can then know your strengths and know your weaknesses. And that's something the best players talk about, the best coaches talk about. They say the best players know their game really, really well. And I didn't really know what that meant till I got older. No one really explained it to me. But it's about knowing, okay, when the ball's swinging away and it's, I'm in my sort of first 20 balls, I'm vulnerable outside off. So I need to really know where my off stump is. I need to be really tight. But if I get through 20 balls, I can play that cover drive because my eyes are in, my feet are moving, I'm a bit susceptible early. So really getting into detail about you as a person, you as a player is another great way to develop your mental skills throughout this time. 